We are now on the part where Michelle meets the guy that she got married to. The official mom, she um she calls me. I haven't even told her that I met the guy. Mm. And she told me, Michelle, your husband is very tall and dark. It, it but I've never considered him for that sort of thing. But when I saw his face, in fact, that's what melted my heart. It's like, mm. oh, he's so prayerful. Because you I know seen... a person can say, no, I'm, I'll live this born again life or I'll leave my marriage because Michelle left hers. God facilitated this wedding himself. And that's the other so... sign. That's how we knew that this thing is of God. So, so God. And I remember him getting super upset, asking, what did you use all that money for? Yeah. Okay, so for those that have been following the story from the beginning, we are now on the part where Michelle meets the guy that she got married to. Yeah. Okay, so let's proceed. <laughs> Just wanted for the people to, yeah. to know. Yeah. So uh -huh, you meet the guy and he's handsome. He's handsome. Mm. He's humble, mm. quiet, okay. extremely tall. I remember back in the day when I used to watch the Kardashians. I liked Lamai. Okay. Tall. Tall. Basketballer. Tall guy, yes. Mm. I'm thinking, okay, physical appearance is good. good. So, you know, Tick. yeah, Mugabo mm. introduced us. Mm -hmm. We spoke. And he, he talked a lot. Like, mm. you know, he was talking and... This and is the, the first time you're meeting him. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm listening to him and what he's saying makes sense. He's mm. telling me how he, you know, he, he loves children. Okay. And he has two kids. Mm. And uh, I'm, I'm okay with him. Let me take you back a bit. You mentioned that um, people started to talk to you, to tell you about these dreams or yeah. of how you are in your season. For getting married, Did you yeah. eventually open up to that? To, to that idea because previously mm -hmm. that's not something that was urgent it wasn't you. urgent I now, wasn't. now mm. when your friend tells you about it and other people your spiritual mom mm. is this something that you opened up to and you my heart was very receptive to it okay my heart okay. was very receptive okay so by the time you meet this guy you're looking i mean that you're okay mindset you're in that mindset yeah and uh He's a cool guy. Mm. I remember at the end of the evening, he walked me to my car mm. and he gave me a chocolate. Aww. You know how I love food. Nice. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, he's mm. okay. Yeah. So, you know, we start to talk. But then I have to go back and ask the Lord. Mm, of course. Yeah. Remember, I have to be sensitive. Like, is he really the one? Mm. Now, remember, I have people that speak into my life. Okay. I have this friend of mine, Mogabo, and I have my mom, mm. Mommy Lila. So, I start to pray about it. And uh, my spiritual mom, she, um, she calls me. I haven't even told her that I met the guy. Mm. And she told me, Michelle, your husband is very tall and dark. What? I was like, no. Wow. So, I tell her, I have met a guy. Uh -huh. He's tall and dark. Mm. Then I said to her, let's continue to pray about it. Wow. Okay. And you hadn't told her anything. I hadn't told her yet. Mm. She's a lovely lady. She's um she's an intercessor in some church mm. somewhere in Kazo. Very lovely woman. God bless her. I love mm. her so much. And um, I started to pray about it. I started asking the Lord, mm. "Is He the one? Is He the one?" And I kept getting confirmation messages. Which confirmation message? That He's indeed the one. Were these, were you the one getting these messages or from different people that you pray with? In my spirit, I felt like he was the one. Mm. But even the people that I pray with. Mm. And um, I remember one morning I was doing my alone time because um, I like to, to go to the secret place of the Most High every 4 a.m. Mm. And I was there doing my notes until about 6.30 by my bathroom window, mm. I had a little kid call out his name three times. The guy's yeah. name? Yeah, the guy's name. And I'm thinking, oh. we don't even have a neighbor on that side. Mm. I banked it. Then there's pastors that I would pray with. 
mm. at my church at the time. And then all cool me to tell me, that is the guy you're supposed to get married to. Now these pastors, had you told them to pray with you about this or was it just a coincidence? There's this one, I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him. He just told me, Michelle, you're in your season for getting married. It's important that you obey the Lord. Mm. And I, I told him about this guy and said, okay, let's pray about it. Mm. And so I, just so you know, I didn't look for this gentleman. Mm. I didn't see him and get butterflies in the stomach of it is him or the highway, like mm. the guy I met at the airport. And... Um, I was just now interested in, it, it, it has to be the will of God. Mm. If it is not, I do not want. Mm. There's another lady I used to pray with, I've forgotten her name. She used to go to MCF as well. She called me and told me, Michelle, that lady that you come to church with, is she mm. your sister? She's talking about Maureen. Okay. I said to her, yeah, you can call her my sister. We've known each other since 2000, but yeah. not biologically, but it's we're so close. Thing. We're so we were sisters before Christ. We're sisters now. Because mm. every time we'd go to MCF, it was me, you, and Maureen. Everyone knew, knew us as, you know, the three musketeers. <laughs> so she told me, Michelle, I was praying for you. And the Lord told me that there's somewhere he's about to enter you. But Maureen can't come with you. Oh. I remember that message very well. Mm. There's somewhere the Lord is about to enter, enter you into, but Maureen mm. can't come with you. So I opened up to her and I said to her, listen, mm. I met this guy and I believe that's the one the Lord needs me to get married to. Mm. And then, you know, we prayed together about it for some time. Mm. That lady, man, I remember her telling me, Michelle, it's not going to be an easy ride. I had a dream where the both of you were walking in a forest, long, a long route through mm. the forest. Mm. And... um. He had two kids. But in the end, you guys made it to the Tamak Road, but it was so tough. Wow. And then she told me these things. What the Lord needs from you in that marriage is very important. Who, tell, who, who is telling you these things? This other lady. Okay. So I'm trying to say to you that I had multiple confirmations mm. from people. Now, and I believed <laughs> all these confirmations mm. are from people mm. did you have any confirmations yourself did god speak to you about this person specifically or what did you get all these from people like i said besides I, the one of the kid calling his name in my heart mm. i felt a, a peace about mm. it because mm. normally i'm also very stubborn mm. But I felt a peace about it. Okay. And um, I believed mm. that he was indeed the one. Okay. Because I remember before him, there was three other guys or four in the same season. There's one that wanted to meet up with me for lunch on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, let's do 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. Because um, cause then we're going to Miracle Center, Rubaga Church, Pastor Kayanja. And I, I, li I enjoyed those um, services when we used to meet up outside just before the lockdown, you know, sit in church in your sunglasses. Cool. You remember when we used to pray from outside? Yeah. So I told him, listen, I'll be in church until about 1.45. Call me at 1.45. I even told him where we can meet up. Yeah. And remember, I was so strict on time at the time. Mm. So we sat there until it was 2.15 and he hadn't called. So I, 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 th I threw him out. On that account, I didn't because meet up with him. He didn't he, keep time. He didn't call. Like, he's unserious. There's another one. When he even went through my pastor mm. at MCF. Some pastor lady who everybody believed to be my mom. So, <laughs> this one felt right. Mm. And everybody I believed in spiritually at the time mm. was pointing me to that. So, would you say that it is important mm a person i know it is important for a person to have um accountability partners let's call them yeah. that yeah. these people were your accountability partners. especially me so would would you say that um these people help a lot in mm. making such a big decision in one's life 
such as getting married? I would say yes, mm. because I'm really thankful to God for the gentleman I got married to. Mm. The Lord blessed me majorly mm. in that marriage. And um, I'm especially thankful to God for Mogabo. Mm. Mm. So would, for example, if it so happened that you had from all these people, your spiritual mom, from Mogabo, the accountability partners, mm. and you didn't hear for yourself, would you? Still get married? Would I would you still have. still have gotten married? I would have. You know why? I came to an understanding, because remember, I spent a lot of time in church listening to someone's reading the Bible. Mm. There's one thing I understood, that a season is a wave. Mm. And if it goes past, you have to wait for another, yes, another yeah. season. And because I was so big on purpose, mm. from like 2018, I'd been praying to God, what is the purpose of my life? Because I remember at the time, my teacher, my teacher of the word was, still is, um, Kevin L. Ewing, mm. and he would say, don't stress God about your purpose. Continue it's to be in your presence, because mm. when you're in, in his presence, you'll get to know your purpose. Yeah. And so when this person, when this person came, and it felt right, and the people around me are, you know, ushering me in, mm. I felt okay about it. Mm. And I was just about to tell you about uh, Mogabo. I listened to him, I trusted him a lot as my mm. spiritual person. Mm. So I remember... He came to me, he called me one time and he said to me, Michelle, wh wh where are you? I said, I'm driving home. I, I, I need you to understand this. Mm. Whatever this person says to you, whatever this gentleman says to you today, just say yes. Mm. I told him, oh, okay. He didn't specify. He said, I've been praying and praying the whole day I've been in prayer and whatever he says to you today, just say yes. So I didn't pay attention, much attention to it. Mm. So I said, okay. And also... Remember, I was doing these family altar things. Okay. I'd be with um, um, Pastor Kamara on um altar call where we were different pastors all over Uganda. Lockdown, we pray via WhatsApp. So I remember, that's the other confirmation. Mm. When we were on that altar call, some pastor, I don't know from what part of Uganda, confirmed the same thing. And even Pastor Kamara kept telling me, Michelle, I keep saying, it is your season. Okay. Now, for a person that is... Um Okay, you say that, by, by, by considering what you're saying, mm -hmm. you're saying that God confirmed to you mm. several times through mm. different people. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't it possible mm -hmm. that, okay, someone out there would say maybe it wasn't God that mm -hmm. was speaking. Mm -hmm. Well, I maybe, believe it was God. Maybe it was, okay, judging by the title. Of, mm. of, of what, of, of this video, mm. of that you left, mm. a person may be out there saying, the reason as to why you left is probably because the person wasn't the one. Oh, he was the place. one with capital letters. Mm. There's, a dis there's a distance between where we are now mm. and when I pack the bags. Mm. So by the time we get to that spot, okay. it's up to anyone to make their mind up. Okay. But I believe he was the one. All right. And I'm thankful to God. Mm. And that's why I always thank God that he used Mogabo to usher me into this thing. Mm. Um, um, I remember, so he calls me and tells me, Michelle, whatever this gentleman tells you, mm. say yes. Okay. Ah, I'm like, okay. So, when was, we met Was up, he saying that because of something? Like, did, did some, did, had they had a conversation before? Did no. something prompt him to say that? No, they had like, not. Did, mm. But um, I think he knows my character. Okay. I'm very stubborn. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And he also knows the other person. He's probably like, mm. he likes to be agreed with. Okay. So I think it was a case of, Michelle, don't mess this up. Eh? For once, keep quiet and listen and agree with people okay. without questioning too much. Because, right. again, that's who I was. Still mm. am, I don't know. <laughs> so um, we meet up for dinner. Mm. You meet up with? The gentleman. Okay. We meet up for dinner. And um, he proposes. Wow. After your friend that introduced you to him says that you should agree with whatever it is that he's going to tell you. Lovely restaurant, caramel. Okay. So you reach there and he proposes Yeah, I'm you. thinking we've come to eat. Wow. And he's saying... And from, this was after how long of you guys talking or dating? Maybe three weeks, four. Mm. Yeah? Maybe so, a month. 
Okay. And he, um, so I look at him and I'm thinking, okay, yes. You accepted. Yeah. Now, let me take you back a bit. Mm -hmm. When you met him at your friend's house mm. the first time, uh -huh. What did you guys talk about? Did you talk about? Oh, now we are now. Now I'm girlfriend. He was telling me about dating. himself. Mm. Okay. By the time kids. you left, by the mm. time you left yeah. your friend's house, yeah. After everything that you had talked about, yeah. Had you then decided I went to the courtship? To, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I had. So now, from that time to the proposal, it's around how many weeks? Months? About a month. About a month. A month or so, yeah. So you you you, you got engaged yeah. a month later. Yeah. Okay. And um, <laughs> this guy, uh huh. You went with him to the same. You you were in the same church. Yes. Okay. We were in the so same church. That. Yeah, we were in the same church. And he was so prayerful. Mm. So, so prayerful. So if you were in the same church, meaning by the time you saw him at your friend's house, I recognized his face. face. Yes, yes. Okay. It was a familiar face. Okay. I recognized him. Because remember, the church us guys used to sit at the front. Mm. So everyone that was coming in, our mm, offertory, you know, we, yeah. we knew everyone. We were slightly in a strategic place. So you, you, But I'd never considered place. him okay. for that sort of thing. Okay. But when I saw his face, in fact, that's what melted my heart. It's like, mm. oh, he's so prayerful. Because you've I know seen him. him. He's, he's at church. Because mm -hmm. we used to sleep at Mutundwe every, was it Thursday? Thursday night. Yeah. Mm. And later on, Tuesday night. Mm. So I was like, I know him. This guy seeks the Lord morning, noon, and night. Mm. He's all right. Remember, right now, my primary concern is God. Mm. So anyone that comes and they're talking God, we're good. Okay. Right? So to you, he was good to go because I you've do. seen him yeah and, and all the spiritual people mm. have endorsed mm. and even me i've had a sign or two okay and it is okay mm. and so he that, comes highly recommended by your friend that you trust thank you okay yeah so that's how he okay. proposed mm. i accepted nice yeah mm. yeah so um now that you are engaged uh -huh. It's now time to... To prepare. To plan. Now, okay, before we get into that, mm -hmm. I know you said that you did not, at that point, you did not have any qualities mm -hmm. that you were looking at because mm. you were solely believing and trusting God of yeah. God's will, let God's yeah. will be done. Yeah. But in the world, people have what they call red flags yeah. of, if I see this in a person, I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. Um. Did he have any red flags by the time in, in that month before getting engaged or, or after when mm. you were planning the wedding? Are there some things you looked at and overlooked and like, this one, I can deal with this. They were there. Mm. They were there. Okay. It's, it's, it's just profound. Mm. When I look back, the signs were there. Mm. I noticed that... Um, Or first, is that something that comes first, later on, that no, you see after marriage? That Before the marriage. Okay. Because what you need to understand is he proposes, mm -hmm. and then in three weeks, we do Kwanjula. Wow. Mm. Everything happens so fast. And then in a month, we do the wedding. Now I'm going to reverse, rewind a bit. See, when we decide to, okay. to, that we're getting, we're okay. going to do this traditions and traditional wedding and the actual wedding mm. it is time to um involve the church because then you need to establish where to get married right mm. and um but god is so powerful mm. the um the power that came with the instruction to get married overshadowed everything that i saw mm. you understand there were there one or two signs. For yeah. example, I noticed he was very short-tempered. Very, very short-tempered. Mm. And um, I remember asking my friend Mogabo, and then he said, oh, don't worry about that. Mm. You know, it, it's not as bad as it used to be. He can, that can be worked on. Mm. No one is perfect. And then I thought to myself, yeah, look at me, Michelle. I'm not perfect either. So here we go. Mm. I must have some flaws. And um, 
red flags the other that i noticed was um right after my mom met him okay my mom passed away mm. yeah our mom <laughs> mommy passed away yeah and um he was very supportive during that time mm, yeah i remember so after mom after the burial mm. he came home to keep me company just like any boyfriend right mm, that was before marriage before marriage yeah. Before marriage, mm. he said, "You know, you can't be all by yourself." Mm. It's him, yeah. very nice guy. But, but then, during that time, I noticed a thing or two. Mm. Like, it's a bit controlling. Mm. It's a bit possessive. And hey, perhaps it's young love. For mm. example, mm. I got a phone call. You know, I'm very friendly. Yeah. Especially border border guys. Anyone that's essential, my phone number, my phone is full of essentials. Mm. Border border riders, chapati guys, whoever is important to me will enter that phone. Hairdressers. So, the security guard is my mm. friend mm. at Quality Supermarket. He phoned me. He was sitting there talking with this guy. Boy, he lost it. What are you doing talking to a guard? Mm. And I'm thinking, isn't a guard a human being? Mm. excuse me i met the guy before i met you so calm down he's, mm. he's just a friend after and besides if the guy was dodgy i would not have taken the call yeah and i also made him understand that you need to understand that you're the first boy i'm doing in six years eh? mm. so relax about it there's not been any you understand yeah. eh? so calm down yeah mm. and i noticed that it, it made him really uncomfortable mm. and i just wanted to ask him that when you look at me you feel like i can be sleeping with an Ascari. Mm. Like, I, I tried to reason with where he was coming from, yeah. but I, I watered it down with the mindset of, okay, he's just in love, mm. you know. And then, on another day, I have this thing that I do with my phone. Eh? I look at my phone to see whoever has sent me messages, and I scroll, and because I get a lot of messages, and a lot of them are amends, mm. I don't open them up. So I can have, like, 160 100 messages in my phone yeah. i only look out for the frequently spoken to people to respond then the rest is probably cancelling mm. or you know so i looked at my phone and i knew who had last sent me a message mm. and I, in my mind i was thinking ah, when i settle down i'll open my messages because usually they're for long conversations i left the room and i left my phone here with my mm. colleague when i came back to check my message I found a whopping number of unread messages that even I would not read mm. in, a, in one hour. So I turned to him and I said, did you go through my phone? Yeah. And remember, I don't even have a password because I have nothing to hide. And he, I said to him, listen, before you even respond, I know where I last read it. So yeah. you've read. And it's so funny. I think it's the mail messages that had been opened there. Eh? <laughs> So I said, no, you know, mm. um, um, forgive me. And then, then I, that was a very big fat red flag. Mm. But I let it slide. Mm. Yeah. And then the other flag was um, before the wedding. Our wedding was at Lake Victoria Hotel, the Windsor in Entebbe. Mm. And um, one of his sisters came to help us prepare. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry to cut you off. Guys, I'm um, sorry in case you hear any noise in the background. We are next to a construction, construction site. site. They're mm. constructing a few things. So really sorry about the sound. If you hear any noise in the background, but right now we really have nothing we to have do to flow. about it. Mm. But just bear with us. They'll, they'll be done soon. Okay, proceed. So and the night before the wedding, mm. his sister... One of his sisters came to help us prepare at the venue to supervise the deco and everything. And you've taken us to the wedding. Let's first. No, you want the red flags. Okay. We will only touch that okay. red flag. And um, when she was done, she came to me and said, I'm done. Mm. Very nice, polite lady. I said to her, okay, see you later. Mm. She left. The brother called me mm -hmm. and uh, he was livid. He was quarreling. How dare you leave my sister alone to, to, to take a taxi from... Please, how old is this sister we're talking about? My age. 
Wow. For younger, like a big lady, right? Okay. How dare you let my sister be alone, take a taxi from me and take me back to Kampala? What kind of woman are you? Like he was crawling so hard. I'm thinking, what is wrong with him? This mm -hmm. is not a toddler. Mm -hmm. If I had known that she needs special help, I would have helped her cross the road. Mm -hmm. Or she could, because we, we slept at the hotel the night before. She yeah. could have used my room. But he was not listening to me. He was just complaining, complaining. I hung up on him. He began raining text messages on me. I blocked him. Because I needed the to be... The night before the wedding. Yes. This is the night before the wedding. Yes. Okay. I blocked him because I needed to be in a good space mm. for where I was headed the next day. Mm. And by this time, the Lord was talking majorly. This is your husband. Wow. Yes. So... So this is the night before the wedding. The night before the wedding. you are technically supposed to be, you know, having a good time, looking forward to tomorrow. Where other brides would be anxious, like, will he show up? Oh, my God. Mm. Supposing he doesn't show up. Mia's like, you know what? You're blocking. Mute. We shall meet at the altar. Wow. <laughs> so. So all these red flags were there. It's funny you call them red flags. Looking back in hindsight, mm. I, I, I went ahead. Because you were working on instruction. Instruction. God's yeah. instruction. Another flag was um, preparations. Mm. Michael Angela. Mm. At the time I was uh, communing at, um, fellowshipping, sorry, at um, MCF. Mm. And you know, before I went to the physical church in Mutundwe, I used to be part of the online church. And I'm the sort of person, when I step into a place, I like to take dominion, like Joshua 1, 3 lives at mine. Yeah. As the sort of person from when I was a child, if you dare leave me with your mom, your mom will love me more than you. I remember my best <laughs> friend in high school, Stella, she introduced me to her wow. mom. Mm -hmm. So Stella would come and complain to me and say, Michelle, every time my mom is quarreling, she keeps saying, why don't you be like Michelle? I'm sure Michelle makes her bed. I'm thinking you've never been to her house. Yeah. So anyway, when I went to MCF, I was as a part of the online church, but I would put my name. You know, mm. people like to, you know, leave. I yeah. um, yeah, would put Michelle Nairobi because I was in Nairobi at the time. And I'd always post the scriptures. I was very active on online church. So for that reason, I had many friends. Mm. Those that felt like being my friends, I would not hide. Oh, Michelle, you're so cool. Can I have you? Here's my Gmail. Send me an email. After vetting you via mail, I give you my number. Mm. So I made a lot of friends on the MCF from congregants to pastors to yeah. the admin mm -hmm. as literally fixtures and fittings in that church now when i showed up physically security guards are my friends the, the people that wash the toilets well. are my friends everybody mm. i took dominion right yeah so the people that i was fellowshipping with at mcf they were so nice my okay. my wedding was funded mm. by the church mm. And I'm so thankful to all the people that stood with me. And I felt that's why I should come and talk about these things. Because I don't want people doubting God mm. because of me or, mm. you know. So I, f I like transparency. Okay. You know the devil likes to work in ambiguity. Like, mm. you know, if you hide it, he'll use it to hit you on the head. Mm. Another person can say, no, I'm, I'll live this born again life or I'll leave my marriage because Michelle left hers. I'll come here and strip myself empty dry naked pick out what you need to learn mm -hmm. so you can walk with your christ mm -hmm. what i don't need is people looking at me and seeing god in me yeah. and they want to do their things according to michelle listen yeah. don't read the book of michelle unless you can relate it to scripture yeah. i'm only here to share my story mm -hmm. so that it can help other people and for the glory of god praise king jesus amen all right so uh i'm going to take you back a little bit to the death you have more red flags to share? Just that flag. I haven't shared it. Okay. So these people were so nice. Mm. I had people giving me 2 million UGX, 3 million UGX, 1 million. Everybody, online church, people I had never for met. For people I had never met. Remember Mike Wanjula? Yeah. First off, mom has died. Mm. Three weeks after mom has died, I'm sending people invites, come to Kwanjula. For those of you that don't know Kwanjula, it's a traditional wedding here in Uganda, in yeah. Africa. It's mm -hmm. what... It's how we call it in our language, but it's a traditional wedding. So it's what she's talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. I had everything was catered for. Mm -hmm. Everyone that the Lord can touch was mm -hmm. touched. I remember there was even a time when um, the lady that was supposed to be my matron could not make it because she, she had a delayed flight from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to ask you to step in to be matron three days to the wedding. Yeah. And me and you sat there thinking, what are you going to wear? 
because the other lady she and i were fellowshipping together at the time we were really really close yeah and um she had offered to buy her own dress we even chose the fashions and everything and now she can't make it on time because you know that, that 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 was the time when to travel one literally had to show everything mm -hmm. to prove that they don't have covid yeah. in order to catch a plane so she couldn't make it on time but i remember when you stepped in um someone called me mm -hmm. from mcf and said there's a lady god told her if she wants she was having marital issues mm -hmm. that if she wants her marriage to get back in order she needs to get a seed money and give it to me wow. please note she's never seen me wow so she started to look for people who know michelle michelle, michelle nairobi of mcf radio michelle mm -hmm. nairobi and then the money got to me and that's what we used for your dress wow. so what i'm trying to pull out is the lord touched multiple people mm. to give me a lot of money and that is what facilitated the kwanjula but here's the flag okay remember traditionally in uganda the lady takes care of kwanjula traditional wedding yeah then the man takes, takes care, care of, of the wedding the wedding this yeah. you know the, the ceremony mm. so for me all of the funds that i got One, what is so extra. interesting that is what i've learned about him even lately mm. if there's any expense he'll give you to the tea That's he will not leave even two shillings for ice cream mm. so i used up the money and by god's grace the provision was just enough mm. i didn't owe any service provider anything also right. you need to note that my family members were not allowed to contribute to this wedding even the closest of the closest very few what do you mean by the one not allowed let me give you an example mm. robert your uncle my brother robert took care of me all of my single life mm. robert would send, send me a bunch of matoke in nairobi because nairobi doesn't have matoke mm. robert would send me robert would buy me fuel robert would literally buy me handkerchiefs like he's a proper dad dad figure and everything mm. But come to the wedding, he said, Michelle, I must get a hefty sum of money for your wedding. Mm. Then weeks leading to, days leading to, Michelle, I'm expecting some money. Until the very last minute, mm. it didn't come through. And not because he did not want Oh, it. let me tell you something. Robert, if Robert is the kind of guy, if he has 20,000 UGX, he'll give you 18,000 and keep two. Mm. You can actually have the impression that he's extremely loaded, oh, even though he is, touched. but he gives to people. Mm, exactly. so for my wedding to come and he's not in a position it is because he's not in a position mm. ian nothing but even now you know that if i call ian right now he'll, he'll send me it. he'll come himself to carry me mm. you get yeah. so god facilitated this wedding himself and that's the other so, sign that's how i knew that this thing is of god so so god what you're trying to say is every it, Every place that every person that you're looking at uh, to provide for you uh -uh. did not. No. God did not yeah. enable them to provide uh -uh. for you. He instead did this for himself. I was surprised by using people Auntie you weren't Esther, expecting. Uh -huh. Auntie Esther provided majorly. Mm -hmm. My my uncle in America, we haven't mm -hmm. spoken since maybe I was two minutes old. Mm -hmm. He sent me a hefty sum, Uncle Dan. Mm -hmm. Like I had money. Right. So Kwanjula has ended and now the gentleman has to facilitate the and and and, and, and he's, he's, he's presenting me the budget. Mm. And I'm thinking, yo. He's presenting you the budget of the wedding. <laughs> and I'm saying, yo, that's your gig. In the middle of your it, um, traditional tradition wedding. Tradition has prepared. ended. Eh? Oh, okay. Yo, this is your gig, you know. Wow. And I remember him getting super upset asking, what did you use all that money for? Mm. That the people gave you. Mm, because he was seeing it coming through. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you're the guy. I'm not keeping it anyway because that's not who I am. Mm. But what's this all about? So yeah. that's the flag that I wanted to bring out. Okay. Now you can go back wherever you want it all to right. go. Okay. I, yeah. hope, I, hope, I hope people have got that. Mm. Now I want us to go back to the right after engagement. Uh -huh. So you said that you got um, engaged to a month later. Did you ever feel like it was rushed? Or better yet, why, why that soon? Like why, why, why a month? Because initially you want to get time to know to who this to know guy is, yeah. to understand each other. Did you ever feel like it was rushed? And also, even after like the engagement, hmm. you could have chosen to to give know, it another to six give months. it another you know uh, time. 
before the wedding, but that was like three weeks later, you're starting to organize for all these functions. You know what? Why the rush? I didn't feel the rush. Mm. I didn't feel like I was rushing. Mm. In knowing myself, mm. if I had left it longer, mm. I would have left him. Because of all these things that you were saying? Perhaps. Mm. Now I'm talking in hindsight. Okay. When I look back now, mm. in knowing myself and how I can be so... At that time, eh? Mm. Even though I was on instruction, mm. I was still a baby mm. in the instruction business. Instructions from the Lord. So, I didn't feel like I was rushing. Okay. Yeah. And I, there was no need... First of all, the guy seemed okay. And I had this thing in my head, like, look, if the Lord has spoken, why should I delay? Because then I felt like if I delay, I'm taking matters back into my own hands. Mm. I am going to sit here and decide I will not be with him because he has done A, B, C, D. So that's why I said to you before, the instruction from mm -hmm. the Lord mm -hmm. was overriding everything that I was looking at. If I'd left it longer, I would have backed out. So Michelle, are you saying that even if God speaks, let me say, instruction of God has said so and so is my husband hmm. am I not supposed to give it some time to understand who this man is even if he has the red flags mm -hmm. he, but he's the one that God has chosen isn't it okay to just wait and you know dead for some more time and get to know who this guy is before we get into I like that I remember yeah. going to um the pastor where we got married, he sat us in his office mm. and he had the same concern. Mm. Isn't this too soon? Mm. I can see his face. Michelle, you guys, he wanted to meet the guy. Isn't this too soon? And um, after he said, anyway, <laughs> make sure that you guys tell each other everything. Mm. Open up to each other so that you don't... But And... But Nicole, I, if I can tell you how I felt exactly at the time, yeah, I didn't feel that it was too soon. I was really? just, I was just thinking like God said, and also I had that voice of my friend, mm, Mugabo, like just Michelle. Accept. We have prayed about this. Unless you want to back out and disobey, mm. okay. Now the other thing I want to know is, mm -hmm. yes, you're working on instruction, but. Were you ever in love of you've gone to your friend's house, you've met this guy, he has proposed. Are you like in love of, oh, butterflies? Do you actually love this man or just instruction? I'm going because God has sent me there. I liked him. Mm. I liked him. Okay. Because like I said, he was good looking. Mm. And um, he, um, he seemed like a gentleman mm. except for those little problems yeah and um he was a nice guy he was there for me when mom passed mm. you know his his um it was nice to have somebody, somebody that's there yeah after being single for so long okay so what you're saying is you liked him i didn't have so you were extreme looking butterflies in the stomach mm. but i was okay I liked him enough. So you were looking to, you know, grow in love when you get there. Exactly. Because mm. again, I want to stress this. The instruction weighed heavily on me mm. more than anything. And we would talk in the morning. He would make calls. And, and you know, and let's talk about this. There's always being in love with the idea okay. of, of getting married. Mm. Getting, being in love with the idea of relating mm. with the person as opposed to the person. Okay. We have to be very realistic on that. Mm. You look at this person and, you know, you have your expectations in a relationship. You know, remember, I've been looking for her, someone to take care of me, someone yeah. to protect me. And there's this tall, dark, handsome guy. And mm. why not? Mm. So you have your expectations and you're in love with your expectations. And when you look at the other person, you see those expectations in them. Mm. So that fuels it as well. Okay, because no. I didn't know him that well yet, yeah. and 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 you know I didn't sit across the room one day and I look at this guy and I say, "Ooh, I must have him." No, mm. it was the way it happened. So you get engaged a month later and you start planning the wedding three weeks later. Do you go on dates? Yeah, or it's just like that's yeah. a come over. Do you remember we do the dates? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do the dates. Mm. 
and then mom passes mm. and then he's staying at mine I think that's after for Kondo. moral support for moral support mm. and then i see that he's a bit controlling not a bit mm. very controlling but now there is where I want to come. Remember mm. how the story you gave us of the guy in Nairobi of he mm. called you, slept on one bed. Mm. Now that he's here, we are dating now. Mm. We are deep, deep into the word of God. Mm. How is the staying situation now that he's there for moral support? Same room, same bed. Yeah, same room. But remember, this is someone that's in church. Okay. And he knows the terms and conditions. Mm, so he's he not... looks very born again. Okay. He knows the drift. Mm. He knows not to touch me. Mm. He knows to sleep in the couch mm, okay. and it is okay. So he in didn't Arabi, bring it was any the... of that up. No, he was a gentleman. Okay. He didn't even try it for half a second. Nice. Yeah, that's the difference between him and the guy in Nairobi. Okay. Yeah. So this one knew the principles. Oh, he knew it seemed to work right. in the word of God. The other thing I forgot to mention my bridal um, leading up to the wedding, you asked me how I know God was in it. The provision was intense. Mm. I had friends I was praying with every once a month mm. at Marsha's house, like I told you. Yeah. I appreciate. I wish every girl had a gang mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. These people were there for me. Mm -hmm. When my mom passed, they came with me and they kept me company throughout. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> leading up to the wedding, they organized my bridal shower. Mm -hmm. I had the best bridal shower at the Serena. Yeah. Beautiful that. gifts, mm -hmm. beautiful people. All my friends came together. Yeah. The thing had God written all over it. Okay. So never once did I have a doubt mm -hmm. if indeed God is in this thing. Okay. Now, Michelle, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying of God being into in this thing, yeah. but I'm trying to, 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 to resonate with someone that's watching. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, the devil is crafty. Mm hmm we know that he can do these things that you're saying, you, mm -hmm. that you're talking about. He yeah. can facilitate these things. Yeah. He can use people to do these things. Mm. So even after that, you strongly believe that it was good. Because I want us to understand, I want you to know, and I know you know that the devil can also provide for these things. The devil can use people to organize something beautiful for you at the Serena hotel mm -hmm. the devil can speak through people can make you think um job chapter so, um let's look at the spiritual implications um job chapter 33 verse 14 says mm -hmm. god speaks mm. once or twice okay but people do not perceive him mm. i want you to remember that i was in my season yeah for getting married mm. i want you to remember that this is not the only guy mm. that approached me during that time i want you to remember that i got my signals from god as well yeah even though there was other people yeah so i got into a comfortable state of let the will of the lord be done mm. okay you understand yeah what i didn't like what i didn't want to do was to get up and regret not doing what god needs me to do mm. Do you understand? I get you, yeah. It was majorly instruction. Okay. Um, very many people were involved. Okay. I remember my girls had a bridal shower for me. Then the entire pastoral team of MCF mm -hmm. organized a bridal shower for yeah, me. That was All the ladies. Yeah. They bought me cake. They mm. prayed for me. Michael and Jula had only pastors. Nice. Michael and Jula, the Lord, the Lord provided. Okay. We went over to Pastor Isaac. Mm. And Michael Angela was at his place. Okay. And all the service providers for my introduction ceremony mm. were spiritual people. My cousin, Pastor Joanna, I remember she prayed so much for this wedding to the extent that she gave me information about certain people in my entourage mm. that she felt shouldn't be because of what the Lord had shown her. Yeah. yeah. So if there was, I never once got anyone come to me and say, do not. That says so you've the Lord. Got tons and tons and tons. Everybody ushered me in. Spiritual backup. I remember at my introduction ceremony, um, the the what the MC for the introduction ceremony mm. is a pastor as well, Pastor Saint Hongo. Yeah. And he made an altar call because I always I said to God, I don't want my introduction ceremony to be your usual traditional stuff. Mm. I want people to come to the Lord. Mm. And I remember asking um, uh, somebody, yeah, would you like? Mm. And I asked Pastor Isaac, would you like to do the altar call? He said, no, Michelle, I'm going to be in the background, you know? 
you had a, you had him in the background helping. Pastor Isaac everything. was in the kitchen cooking. Wow. Oh, I can name a list of pastors. Mm. Now this pastor sent Tongo. He made an altar call, and we knelt down. The entire pastoral team of MCF, and I don't know who from where. Everyone laid on hands and ushered. They ushered me in. So Nicole, I can speak you confidently that it that wasn't a it mistake. Was God who sent you there. God into sent this me. Marriage. Let me uh, sp uh, speed you up to the wedding day. Mm. That night, I'm in the room. And I wake up to pray. And the Lord gives me the book of Esther. Mm. I had the scripture in my sleep. I woke up to read it. I don't know exactly where it is, but if I open it, I can find it. But it says, I was concerned because when in Tebe, we're going to be wedded in Kansanga. First of all, God even gave us, he said, you will not get married in MCF. I want you to get married in what? In church. Kansanga. In church. Mm. I remember we had a dream where, I had a dream where I was walking around the MCF, but I couldn't find the gate. And a wow. voice said to me, you will get married in Kansanga. Wow. You get? Yeah, I get it. Now. So, I wake up in the night and give an Esther chapter, I don't know what, but I remember it said, I was concerned about traffic. Mm. You know how people can be late for the wedding, yeah. delays, you know those yeah. horror stories. Yeah. And the scripture said, I am, I'm going to dress you in a royal mm. crown. Mm. And you'll have a royal crest. Like, I'll take care of everything. It will be smooth. Like, you, I wish I could find it so that I don't like to paraphrase. By the time I woke up to prepare and, and all the service providers coming to doll my face up, which made mm. me so uncomfortable because I don't like makeup, mm. I, I knew. I knew. Okay. Yeah. All right, so if the it, yeah. so she, Michelle is trying to confirm again and again that it is actually God who sent her into this marriage. Yeah. So in case you're there and you're wondering and you're thinking, oh, maybe she had wrong, or oh, maybe I she don't believe herself so. there because, mm. you know, the desires of her heart, this was not it because she clearly tells you that she liked the oh, guy. Another confirmation. And, mm. You know how you have... Um, <laughs> Um, counseling sessions yeah. before the wedding. Yeah. And because now ours was quick. Mm -hmm. So it was quick pace. Mm. See this one, see that one, see that one. So I remember um, we went for counseling at Kansanga mm -hmm. and um, the lady has, had said to us, be here at 11. Yeah. So my intended, when I called him at 11, he was an hour away. Yet I had called him way before you're to let to him be know. There at yes. So wake mm. up. You know we need to be here. And I remember getting there, and the person that's supposed to counsel us is here. Mm. And my person is an hour away. I can tell for a fact. Wow. I, I began. I began to fidget. Mm. I think that's the first training that I got. Mm. Because briefly you had mentioned that you're very good on timekeeping. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now I, I got over that. It was actually a weakness. <laughs> Wow. And so flawed. Mm. So I started to sweep the room up to help her organize. And then mm. she's saying to me, oh, you're so nice. You know, she even came to my wedding. Mm. And then she's like, hey, I've never had any bride like you. But me, I was thinking, you know, I'm trying to confuse you because we are keeping you yeah. here. We are late, you yeah. know. And so I started to think like, but Michelle, am I doing the right thing? Mm. Then I remember another guy that counseled us. Well, in the middle of um, counseling, mm. my intended started to fall asleep. By the way, most of the counseling, he would fall asleep. Really? Dozing off, yeah. So this man is explaining to us how to Was have... it like a class or just the three of the you? The two of us and the guy that's counseling us. Wow. So I remember this guy is talking and I look at this person thinking, but Jehovah, are you sure this, this gig... is the one? The man looked at me and said, excuse me, Michelle, mm. this is your husband. And you said that, like, within your heart. Yeah, within me. Not out loud. Yeah. Mm. Michelle, this is, he said it twice. Wow. So I thought, okay, this is it. And I remember when I left, yeah. I told Mugapa the story. Uh -huh. I told him, man, your friend is special. Mm. When counseling, he dozed off. And then, but as I was starting to doubt, the person who was counseling looked at me in the eyes and said, excuse me, <laughs> that is your husband. Wow. That is your husband. He didn't even wake him up. Yeah. And then we carried on. Wow. So Mugabo told me, hey, Michelle, that's comforting. At least it's not just my voice. I'm glad there's other voices. There's other voices confirming to you. Yeah. Now that you've talked about counseling, um, 
how many did you have enough counseling sessions? Oh yeah, counseling is very nice. They because give you a whole list. Everything was rushed, seeing as everything happened so fast for you. There's not a single lesson we missed. Mm. For the counselors that we had to meet at their houses, we went. Would you say that that helped? Well, with where it we did, are going, it did you help me. The, would you say that the counseling helped? It did help me because I'd even go back and revise my notes. Mm. It helped me to a certain extent, okay. even though it was so rushed. Okay. But we'll get to that later.